What's up guys, welcome to the first video where we'll be looking at ICMizer 2. Now, ICMizer is without question one of the most powerful tools going when it comes to analyzing tournament poker. What it does is calculate your hero's range based upon ICM, um, also known as the independent chip model. Now, this is a model which calculates a player's overall equity in a tournament based on their relational stack depths as well as the payout structure. Now this compares to something like chip EV which simply calculates the expected value of a play uh, based upon how many chips they're going to make. Now one nice thing about ICMizer is that you don't need to sign up for the monthly subscription to use the service. They do offer three free calculations per day and one Nash Equilibrium calculation per day. So you don't even need to pay monthly to use this software. Worth noting, if you have some interesting tournament hands you want to review, um, particularly with ICM spots, it's the type of calculation where you might have a few unique situations you want to look up, but you're unlikely going to be looking over hundreds and hundreds of hands to review. Right, so let's get into the nuances of the software. This is what ICMizer 2 Basic will look like. Um, there's also a pro version which features the replayer and sit and go coach. Uh, but for this course, and I think for general ICM calculations, the basic software is all you'll need. So to kick things off, um, ICMizer really needs as many variables as possible to thrive. Um, so that includes chip stacks, um, players left in a tournament, tournament structure, things like that. So to start, we'll go to custom tourney. And now one of the nice features of ICMizer is it does have a lot of pre-made tournaments which are common on lots of the poker sites. But for the sake of our example here, and we're just going to have a contrived example where we're playing a three-handed tournament. Um, so we'll do a turbo structure and let's just enter the payouts here. Um, so for the sake of example, and to emphasize how ICM impacts our decision making, let's do some quite steep payout structures. So we'll do $1,000 for first, $500 for second, and $100 for third. Great, so now we've created our tournament. Um, next up, you can select how many players are at the table for the simulation you're running. Uh, as I said, for our example, we're going to be running three players, but you can do up to full ring, up to 10. And then we select the blinds. Um, again, there'll be more options if we do create new here. Um, but for the sake of our example, we'll do 5100 since this is mathematically quite an easy number to follow. Um, then you can select where hero is positioned at the table. Um, in this example, we'll do hero on the button, but if you move hero to the small blind, say, um, you can then select actions based on the previous players. So you can say, if the button is facing a raise of 200, um, how this changes things. One thing to note is that ICMizer does require you to input a great deal of ranges to calculate things most accurately. Um, so for example here, um, in this example, if we have hero in the small blind, we would need to input the button's opening range first before we then um, move on to the other actions. Uh, let's go back to our previous example where we have hero on the button. Here we are. Um, you can enter the stack sizes on the left here as well as the actions. And so, as you'll notice here, we have three players at the table, hero with 13 big blinds, 
the small blind with seven big blinds and the big blind with a huge chip lead sitting at 50 big blinds. So in terms of ICM implications, um, this makes for an interesting situation in that we are sitting in the middle of the pack and we're kind of waiting for the small blind player to bust. We're hoping for them to bust because there's a big payout jump from third to second uh, as we inputted the third payout at $100 and the second payout to $500. Uh, so from here, to get this hero shoving range, which we want to find out or solve for, we need to input a few ranges. Um, first off, we'll need to put the cooling ranges or the estimated cooling ranges of the small blind and the big blind uh, when we shove. And so to do this, um, we can use a program like Snapshove as we will look at in the next section. Um, or alternatively, we can just input the ranges ourselves. Um, this is nice because ranges will vary from player to player. So if we have particular reads or information on one specific player at this table, we can adjust their ranges accordingly. Uh, so here, uh, we've just used ranges from Snapshove. Um, so this will be a small blind cooling range at a three-handed table uh, facing a button shove. And that cooling range looks like about 18% of hands, as we can see here. And then we've done the same for the big blind. Um, as expected, the big blind calls a slightly wider range at 22%. Then we also need to input some other ranges um, because this will impact the profitability of our decision, uh, which include the small, bind, small blind shoving frequency, uh, as we can see here, and then the big blind's cooling frequency and cooling range versus that small blind shove. And so again, I've pre-inputted these um, just to save a bit of time in the video. And that's the cooling range there at 54%. Another nice feature is that we can save ranges as we can see on the right hand side here. Um, and we can also change the uh, hand ranking strength on this slider on power push, power call and versus random hand as well. Um, one other feature before I forget is that there is a multi-table feature. So, as I said before, ICMizer benefits from having as much information as possible. Now, if we're playing a tournament where there are multiple tables left, um, let's say we're in the money, but we're approaching a final table, we can check this MTT box and adjust the remaining players left. And we can also set uh, average stack, we can set total chips. We can change the stack distribution, so we can have it as a random amount. Um, or alternatively, we can do manual. And this, we can change the stack distribution uh, from short to high. And as you can see, as we scroll down, it will list all of the players in this feature. Uh, since we're just doing the three-handed example, we won't use this feature for now. Now, let's get into the calculations. First off, you'll notice that there's a Calculate Nash Equilibrium button. Now, as implied, this will calculate pure chip EV uh, for Nash, equi Nash Equilibrium ranges. Now, Nash Equilibrium uh, is a model which assumes players are playing optimally and calculates for what would be an optimal shoving range. It derives the equilibrium term um, from the idea that both players are in an equilibrium, so to speak, because neither player is incentivized to deviate from their strategy because both players are playing optimally and there are no leaks to exploit. Um, next up we have the conventional calculate button. Now this will calculate for ICM. Uh, so this is really what we're interested in. Um, the charts feature we'll look at once we've done the calculations. 
And then we also have the FGS here, which stands for Future Game Simulations. Now, you can change this uh, for up to six future game simulations. And what this does is it factors in some features which ICM typically ignores. So things like uh, positions of players in relation to the blinds. Uh, also the fact that blinds are going to be moving around the table. And also the size of the big blind. Uh, these are all things which ICM, I guess, doesn't consider. But when we run future game simulations, it takes these uh, factors into consideration and affects the overall result. We won't use that for now. Um, and one other thing you can toggle is the results here. We can calculate for our percentage EV. Uh, we can calculate for our dollar EV. Uh, or we can calculate for chip EV and chip big blind EV. Uh, for a nice literal example, let's do dollar EV in this example. And let's calculate our ICM shoving range. And so we can see our hand here is ace jack. And we're curious to see what we'd be doing with a hand like this in this three handed situation. Now, um, this is where ICM Isa gets quite interesting. So you might think three-handed with a 13 big blind stack, uh, ace jack of diamonds should be an absolute slam dunk jam. Um, and something like snap shove would definitely say that it is. In fact, let me just pull up snap shove very quickly and show you guys. So if we have 13 big blinds at a three-handed table shoving from the button, Snapshot says we should be shoving 32.4% of hands. As we can see, Ace Jack is firmly in that range. However, when we factor ICM considerations into account, and the fact that there is a very steep pay jump, and we have a player which is significantly shorter stacked than us, our shoving range should be much tighter. Um, we can see ICMizer recommends a shoving range of 4.7%. So the worst hand we'll be shoving here is Ace Queen off, um, followed by tens, or followed by Ace Queen suited, um, and then followed by tens. One other nice feature of ICMizer is that it breaks down the value uh, that is the expected value of every single hand in your range. So we can expect to make somewhere in the region of $38 of equity when we shove aces. Conversely, if we have a hand like twos and we shove, we can expect to lose $28.26 when we shove a hand like this. Um, let's look into a couple of other features of the results here. So if we click on the detailed results, it will show the different probabilistic outcomes um, based on all of the actions at the table. So it will show our probability of busting with this specific hand. Um, and as I said before, it will show the EV of folding or pushing. Um, just for example's sake, let's show how this ICM range compares with the Nash equilibrium range. So we've already calculated for ICM. Now let's run a calculation for Nash equilibrium. And as expected, it recommends a wider range, a significantly wider range, almost three times as wide. Um, 16%. Finally, let's look at the charts very quickly. Um, so to do the charts, you have to click on the range that you want to analyze. So in this case, we're looking at, actually, we'll do this for the ICM example, as I think this is slightly more interesting. Um, so to apply the ICM 
example once again. Make sure that you adjust all of the ranges accordingly because when you calculate for Nash equilibrium, it will distort the ranges. Uh, so we have our shoving range, our cooling range here from the small blind, cooling range from the big blind, shoving range from the small blind, and cooling range from the big blind. So now if we want to look at the chart, here we go. So there's three tabs on the charts column. First is the results, um, which we've already gone over. The next is a range chart. And now this shows the EV difference of here is range uh, versus the small blind cooling range. And again, we can change the hand rankings here. And um, we'll stick with the Sklansky Chubikov ranges as this is what we have done in the past. And finally, if we go to the hand EV chart, this will show the EV difference of pushing, or the EV difference rather, uh, which is the uh, EV of pushing minus the EV of folding. And this is against the small blind's cooling range. So if the small blind cools 100%, uh, we expect to make or rather lose the least. Um, if they call a fairly tight range, um, as expected, because we are going to be shoving a, well, this is specifically against uh, twos, but if our opponent calls with a fairly tight range here, so somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 15% of hands, uh, we will be losing the most, as expected, because twos is going to perform very badly against a tight cooling, well not very badly, but going to perform at its worst against a tight cooling range compared to a much wider one or an extremely tight one where we make chips from them over folding in the small blind. Um, so that's kind of it for the basic features of ICMizer. Uh, in the next video, we're going to get into a couple of more in-depth scenarios um, rather than running through a kind of toy example where we just have three-handed. We'll look at some genuine scenarios from hands that I've played and we will make use of one of the nice features here where we load tournament hands from the clipboard. So doing this, you can load hands directly from Poker Tracker or Holder Manager, paste them in, and it will automatically import stack depths, chip sizes, things like that. Um, and so we'll get into that in the next video. Thanks, and I'll see you then.